Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode, we will bring you our favorite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to our episode this week. I am so excited for you joining us. We have a juicy topic for you. We're diving into why it is challenging for people to go from having a good enough life to creating an amazing one and of course all the stuff that can come up along the way and we have an expert on this topic with us today the fabulous Leslie Martin so welcome Leslie. Thank you Louisa it's great to be here. Uh, I'm so excited for our conversation today and well by way of introduction let me share share this with everybody so they get to know a little bit about you and then we'll, we'll, we'll dive into this. The Leslie experienced much adversity early in her life, and she then spent the next couple of decades overcoming it and creating a stable life for herself. And she completed her BA in contemplative world religions. Wow. And her master's in mental health counseling. And she spent the past 15 years building a holistic psychotherapy practice, helping others overcome their past trauma to create safety and security for themselves. And then seeing a need for what comes next, she launched her coaching practice to help people explore what more there is for them. And she created the Good to Great program to help others make their lives truly amazing. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It's Uh, been quite a journey. I was going to say, as I was sharing that, I was like, wow, this has been a, a huge journey. And I love you know, what you've studied, it's absolutely fantastic. And all the, the, the wisdom that you're then able to bring all your clients and all that experience as well. If we kind of go, you know, go back a bit, what made you start your, your own business? Well, in, I would say this, the simple answer is to help people. Like I always had a passion for that. And that is one of the founding values for why I started my counseling practice um, hmm. many years ago. And then really it's what you explained as far as, you know, I think I had gotten to a point in my life where building my counseling center, figuring out how to run that in a sustainable way. Meanwhile, I'm doing all of the work myself as far as how to grow and expand and just um, heal from a lot of those adverse experiences earlier in my life and create a sense of stability like a few years ago, I got to a point where it was essentially that like, okay, I was good, maybe for the first time, where I just okay, I can relax, trust in this, things are good, I've got this even flow. And I probably hung out there for a year or two. But then being the high achieving person that I am, I started thinking, okay, now what? Like, is this as good as it gets? Do I just hang out here? Or what comes next? And I'm not sure if it was just the point in my life where I was at, but as I was kind of wrestling with those questions myself, I noticed there's a lot of people in my own life that were kind of questioning the same thing, whether it was career or relationship or just wanting to learn a new skill or travel somewhere different. Like, people really wanting more for themselves. And, you know, I think maybe some of it was the point in life. I think the pandemic had an impact on a lot of us in terms of giving us space to reevaluate and question. And it, it just seemed to me like, okay, I'm not the only one feeling this. So where do we go at that point 
to kind of explore this, to continue growing, to continue expanding, to continue challenging myself. It didn't, I mean, I say this with all the respect that I can for a therapist being a therapist myself, right? But mm -hmm. it didn't seem like the, the kind of issue to bring to therapy because there wasn't really a mental health issue going on. It's just like, I'm good, but I want to be better. Like, where, where do I go to do that? And so that was kind of rumbling around in, you know, in my head. And I think it was at about this time that I really discovered what life coaching is and how it works and what you can kind of do uh, with people in that capacity. And it just seemed to me like something clicked into place like this. This is the missing piece. This is where you go next. And so it did in some ways seem like a, a natural next step of, okay, I've got the all the foundation of all of my years of being a therapist and doing trauma work with folks and how to work when you're, you know, not quite up to baseline, how to get you there, how to heal from that. And then the coaching skills seemed like, okay, that's the next piece to layer on to then help you really expand beyond. And so I started using it in my own life and noticed some pretty dramatic shifts and then decided that I wanted to go on to become certified and actually launch my coaching business, um, which has been up and going for a couple of years now to do just that, to help people that are in a pretty good place that have good lives, but that want more for themselves and just aren't, you know, really sure how to navigate some of the negative self-talk that comes up or some of what, you know, society tells us is possible for us and just how to do that. So just as a, a support so that others could experience the benefit that I had, which is, you know, that the life that is available to us has an abundance of love and possibility and can be really amazing. So that's the, oh. that's the reason. <laughs> I love it. And you touched on something that I think is so important. And I know our listeners really, uh, you know, will appreciate this conversation in, in recognizing that we don't often when we start out on a journey, we don't see the full picture. And there is often so much beyond that initial picture that we first thought about, like you were saying, you know, when you first started, you created your psychotherapy practice probably didn't at that point think about the coaching as a, as the beyond the vision bit. Right. Not at all. I don't even think I knew it existed. <sighs> yeah. And if I, you know, if I could look back on myself when I first started off and been like, this is where you will be 15 years later, I think I would have been like, you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I never could have envisioned that. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. When, when I, if I'd spoken to myself, you know, 10 years ago while I was working for social services and said, you know, you're going to have this kind of business, you'll be working very spiritually and energetically. I would have been like, who, who are you talking about? What? <laughs> this isn't me. <laughs> right. uh, but I think that's what's so exciting, isn't it? How our visions can unfold into something greater than what we originally had, had thought was potential. Oh, 100%. And that that is an ongoing evolution, right? Yes. Like you're not at a place where you're going to stay forever and ever. I'm not at a place where I'm going to stay. All of our listeners, like everyone is in a process of evolving and growing and expanding our consciousness. Yeah, it's a continued evolution. That's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. You make it sound like it was a really easy next step for you. It, was it? Yeah, not not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. For some of the reasons that we just touched on, right? Yeah. Like I, I couldn't necessarily envision that. Mm. And then I, I also think that as someone in, you know, many of my clients would relate to this too, and and possibly many of your listeners, where when you have been through a difficult period in your life, and then you get to a place where things are good and stable, it's almost like the last thing you want to do is rock the boat. Mm -hmm. there. And so I had, you know, quite a bit of mental drama, I guess I'll say around, not that I don't want to make it sound like it was ridiculous. There were, I think, some aspects of myself that were very scared to mm -hmm. step into the unknown. It's, you know, uncertainty is not something that our human brains like very much. And so 
no, that was not an easy step. Um, but I think for myself, one of the the strengths that I have is I just keep putting one foot before the other. So I just kept taking smaller steps until I really like lived into that decision of, okay, I, I can do this. I'm going to do this. And, and now here I am doing it, but it was a process to get there for sure. I love how you describe there around just taking one step and putting it in front of the other and, and growing from there, because it, that's the way to break it down to make it easier. Otherwise it can feel too gigantic of a, a leap at times. Sure. That's sure. Really, really and, powerful. you know, there are still those days where the negative self-talk, the who are you to think that you can do this and, you know, it's not working and all of that stuff comes up. And then there is always some small little step that can be done, mm, right? That helps to just kind of temper that, right? And yes, I think that is, it's one of the things that I really love helping people work with is how to balance what goes on in inner minds because we believe so much of that chatter and it just frankly is not true. It's not accurate. It It's not a good picture of what we're capable of. You've hit the nail on the head and, you know, thank you for speaking to this because I think so many people can make themselves wrong when they start to listen to the chatter in their head or they'll think that they perhaps are the only person feeling like that rather than recognizing that any point when you're starting a new business you're changing your identity ultimately from you know whatever you were doing before to the next step and your subconscious is going to kick off and create all that chatter that you were you were talking about for sure for sure and that has actually been a bit sobering in my process is I thought after having run, you know, one business for all these years that like, oh, I I know how to do this. I can start a second one. And, you know, a lot has changed in terms of how businesses are run and developed and the world has changed. And there's a whole skill set that, you know, I didn't have at the beginning that I was having to learn. So it's this strange juxtaposition of being you know, in some ways, a very experienced expert qualified in my existing field, and then being a total newbie in the other and how, you know, going back and forth and really like trying to take all of the good things from the old identity to -hmm. be able to bring that in while learning and literally building and creating a new identity. Yes. Oh, I think so many of our listeners are going to go be saying, Leslie, that's me too. I completely get that. <laughs> completely get that. As you, you mentioned, um, you know, some of the, the pieces that were challenging in terms of the I- identity piece. Are there any other challenges that you've had to overcome to, to be able to take this, you know, this next step? Well, I think the it's a more foundational one than some mm-hmm. of the the negative self talk right and that is just like the fundamental concept of myself and what like what i could do and what i couldn't do mm-hmm. what was possible what was available for me and that that is one of those things that has totally had to shift and i would say i i learned that initially maybe on a more personal level first by using some of these coaching tools to do something that I previously would have just said, like, there's absolutely no way I could ever do that. And then I proved myself wrong about that. And I did it. (laughs) And like, I'm incredibly proud of myself for doing that. But it also showed me that what is there underlying, like even below the you know, the, are you good enough? Or what if you can't do it is the, the assumption that just like, that's not for you. And I I really challenge that to see that, okay, like what I think is possible for myself is beyond, or, you know, isn't what I am actually capable of is beyond what I think. And so that, that was a big shift because now anytime I notice some of that negative self-talk, I really have to check myself. Like, is that true? How do I know? Have I tried Mm -hmm. it and it's not gone well? Like I've, if I'm not there yet, and I think we're always growing, like it's, we can continue expanding kind of indefinitely. 
Oh, we so can. I love how you were saying that you challenged that that thought rather than believing it <laughs> um, and, and listening to it and allowing it to get louder essentially and to to make a bigger impact and to to stop it in your in in your tracks because it is one of those things that if we truly did listen to all that chatter no one would take any action <laughs> and be able to move forward at all to do anything different or create anything right. different <laughs> right it's uh it's, it's incredibly powerful isn't it you were talking about um you know the skills that you've learned what What's perhaps a, an example of one of the coaching skills that you've learned that you found, you know, has really or is really serving you? Mm. Well, so without going into like tons of detail about it, mm. we learned a thought model mm. for how to kind of conceptualize things that happen that actually from a therapy perspective is very similar to cognitive behavioral therapy, right? Like, Thoughts create feelings, which drive actions, which is why we do what we do, right? Yeah. But I think one of the pieces that was super helpful about that, that's kind of missing from the, the cognitive behavioral model is this idea that the circumstances or the events that we experience in life are neutral, that they don't have any inherent like good or bad or morality about they are just things that happen and that what determines how we interpret those events is our, our thoughts about it and that isn't necessarily new information for me because that fits very much in line with all of my mindfulness training from my undergraduate work about you know kind of like non-attachment to our thoughts and things like that right that there's things aren't inherently good or bad. They just exist. And then they fade if it's a thought or a feeling, right? Like yeah. it exists for a moment and then we're on to the next moment. Um, and also in the, all of the trauma therapy, um, you know, work that I've done, all of that education and literature, there's a lot of understanding of how, you know, the impact of a certain event has more to do with how, it, how we interpret that and how that impacts us than what the event itself was. But for some reason, hearing it in the coaching language was very empowering for me because it was like, okay, if I had defined myself, and this goes back to my earlier, you know, hmm. talk about like my self-concept shifting. If I define myself as someone who is this or can't do that because this thing happened to me, then if the circumstance itself isn't, is just neutral and it's just a thing that happened, like I don't have to continue defining myself in that way any longer, right? So uh, just to give you an example to sort of make that real, like one of the things that I had used a lot of the coaching skills early on to do was to train for an open water swimming trip, which was not something like I had I could swim, but didn't do it on a regular basis and had never done it in open water. And I decided to do that literally a couple months after having a very bad ski accident where I had broken my shoulder and torn two ligaments in my shoulder. And I had a whole bunch of other injuries as well, but I was primarily concerned about my shoulder and could I actually do the, the swimming because mm. a lot of overhand movement. And so initially, um, when we thought, when my friend invited me on the trip, she's a lifelong swimmer. I was like, no, I, I can't do that. Like, thank you for asking, but there's no way. And I will say this was the, the third time that I had injured the shoulder. So I had this identity of like, you know, I'm, my shoulder's weak, that I am not athletic, that I can't do this. And then I started really thinking like, okay, well, what if those are just my circumstances and those are things that happen to me? What if they don't define or they're not a good determinant of what I can and can't do? And I really started thinking like, hey, I think just as a personal challenge, I want to try to go on this trip. And I will say I was still in physical therapy, right? I was in physical therapy for all of my injuries for months and months. And I started talking to the physical therapist, hey, can 
you know, do you think I can do this? And he was like, yeah, I think you probably could. Not right. You can't get in the pool right now, but if you, you know, get to this point, that point, right. The long and short of it is I found a swim coach and explained to her my situation and my limitations. And she was like, okay, well, why don't you get in the pool and let me just see what, what you can do. And we'll go from there. And so I did. And then she's like, yeah, I think you can do it. And I think I had maybe six weeks. I don't even think it was two full months Ooh. to train for that trip. And I did it. I did not do it perfectly. I did not do it quickly. But coming from, you know, my starting point, mm. for me, that was a huge success because it proved to me that what I thought of myself and what I would be was capable of doing was just wrong. And so much of our self-talk is that, right? Like I remember having a coaching session after a training session in the pool mm -hmm. where I had swam, I don't know, like a mile or something, Wow, which is long to be yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was saying to the, the coach, like, you know, I don't, for the, the swim trip, I think it is about five kilometers a day of swimming, mm -hmm. which is a, a lot, right? And I was like, there's no way I can do that. I'm not a swimmer. Like, right. I'm thinking about my girlfriend and the people on the trip that are, they've yes. been doing this lifelong. Like that is not me. And the coach just was like, um, I'm, I'm a little confused. Why are you saying you're not a swimmer? You just told me that you just swam a mile and a half in the pool. And it, it took me aback. I was like, wow, you're right. I did do that. Cause I did do that. Right. <laughs> um, but the way that I had been thinking about myself was still that old identity. So that particular skill of being able to separate out, you know, the, the circumstance and the things that have happened from who you are so that you can explore that possibility to maybe become something else has literally been life-changing for me. Do you know, the example you've given there around with the swimming is so powerful. I think everyone will be able to really relate to that because you re it's really, it's so interesting and it always blows me away how unless you can catch yourself or you've got somebody helping you to catch it, you can just go down this fixed path that you think that you're on that you have to go on rather than being able to be open to the op opportunities and possibilities like you were suddenly like hang on a second <laughs> I'm just going to stop myself right there and let's just see if I can become an open open water swimmer right right <laughs> I just living into the I love that question of like it's a different play on the words what if like what if I could do it. What if it were possible as opposed to how we use it? Like, well, what if this bad thing happens? Mm. Like we assume that's more true or possible just because of how the brain is wired. Right. But we assume that that negative outcome is more probable than a positive one. But I love living into it from the perspective of like, what, if, what if you could do it? <sighs> It's so expansive. I can feel that. Yeah, that's incredible. It's so incredible. I love how you use that and being and being able to show people that you did completely change your perception and your self-concept of yourself in relation to, to that physicality part and being able to actually do the swimming is just so powerful. There's so many business lessons, Leslie, wrapped up in. <laughs> wrapped yeah, up in I mean, that. I think that's why I talk about it, because that was the that was probably the first, like one of those formative experiences of, well, like if I could do that on literally a broken body, there's probably not much that I can't do if I put my mind to it. Yes. Yes. And being able to catch ourselves and thinking, instead of thinking, what if I can't do it? What if I can? And yes. who, what do I need to believe to be able to listen to that voice? Totally. And then being willing to just step by step enter into that new belief. Because I don't think we just, sometimes it's maybe a light bulb moment, right? Where you believe something different about yourself. But I think a lot of the time it is, it's some groundwork gets laid with all those initial steps and you just keep reinforcing and, you know, like 
what if I could, what if I could, what if I could, at some point you believe that you can. Love that. What if I could? What if I could? And then you can. It's exactly it. Exactly it. Oh, there's so much gold here. What would you say, just thinking, and you may have covered these already, but in terms of kind of wrapping up, what what are the sort of three tips that you know you'd love the entrepreneurs that are listening to to walk away with? Oh, sure. Because I I remind myself of these pretty much on a daily basis (laughs) since I'm you know at at the point in my coaching business where I'm still building, right? Yeah. very, very useful. So one of them is to really be patient because it, it may take longer than you think it should, or than you want it to, or then it feels comfortable to Mm -hmm. right? Because again, we're just kind of conditioned to want that instant gratification and think, well, if I just do all these right things, I'm talking to the perfectionists out there like myself, (laughs) right? Those high achievers, like just do all the right things and then it'll work. And, you know, building a successful business is, there's not a clear straight line there. It's different for everybody. And so really being able to be patient with yourself while you're going through it and just remember that, you know, if it's, it's not where you want it to be, it's not that anything's gone wrong. It's just, part of the process and it's all learning and we're always growing and expanding and, and so are our businesses. Exactly. Yeah. So I would say that's, that's number one. Um, and then another thing that's been helpful for me and also a bit of a challenge because I like to do things myself <laughs> is to, to get help for some of the things that I'm just not good at or don't want to take the time to learn Um, or it's maybe not the best use of my time, or I could hire out for that. So just, you know, with, with the tough stuff, everybody's got different skill sets. And so for um, some of the things that are maybe more challenging for you, like get some help that is not a sign of, that means literally nothing about you, right? It's just, this is what I'm deciding to do to, to help support my business in this way. So that one big game changer one also. (laughs) <laughs> and um, the third one I would say is to, well, I think first of all, you have to have a really compelling reason why to do it. Mm. But then once you're into it and you get caught up in the weeds of all the nitty gritty of whatever the new tech skill is or the thing that I'm trying to learn is to come back and remember why. So remember your why, um, because if you really want to be successful, that is the thing that can act as the North Star, basically, to help guide you. It's always there. It's always shining. It may at some points be brighter than others, but it is always there. And you can always, you know, gauge your path by by the reason why you're doing this. So those, I would say, would be my three. Oh, those wisdom bombs right there. I think that I love that, your why being your North Star, because yeah, that resonates so much for being able to have that guiding light so that when, like you were talking about the stuff that can come up with with any business that anybody's running, there are going to be peaks and troughs along the way. And I think that um, being able to hold that vision of what the, the direction that you're going in and the impact that you want to make is just helps to pull you along on those days that perhaps are feeling a little bit tougher than others um, when, you know, whatever it is that entrepreneurs are dealing with as uh, people have many different, different types of businesses. It's just, yeah, that's uh, such a beautiful way to keep, keep that focus on where, you know, where you want to go. Yeah. And like I said, I think those, I offer those as much as reminders for myself, right. As (laughs) for any, any of the listeners, because it, yeah, I mean, some days everything flows smoothly and some days you're like how did I get here (laughs) so true and I'm writing those reminders down for myself as well because I think it is at any point in business is remembering that there are those points that can come along the way things won't go as perhaps in the direction that you thought that they might I always say to people it's like being in the energy of curiosity so you can be curious about trying new things rather than making it oh it didn't work because I was attached to the outcome of it that can help that can make you feel like there's there's something that went wrong rather than let's be curious and almost playful in the exploration and the creativity of it yes I think curiosity is one of those also just core values for 
me because it it does it's how do we challenge not from an aggressive like this is wrong and i need to come up with a you know a better way to think about it but just being cu curious what if that's not true what else might be true like let's let's just see what happens it's i think it makes it a little bit easier to take some of those risks or be vulnerable if you're not deciding ahead of time that if it doesn't go well that that means you're terrible at mm. whatever it is that you're trying to do yeah quite quite i love it i love it oh there's so much um wisdom that you've got and your expertise i'm so excited for everybody who has you know listening to our conversation really do invite them to all come and come into your world and to come and check you out and i think you know just to speak to this because i know that within the coaching industry a lot of people bandy around the term i'm a trauma-informed coach etc and yeah. I think a lot of people say that without having the expertise that perhaps someone like your, yourself has. So I really just wanted to kind of speak to that, to highlight that, that you, you know, in mm. terms of the expertise that you bring to yes, your clients you. with, with the coaching hat on, that you really do understand that. Uh, yeah, I did an entire certification program just in that postgraduate. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely a, a love and a passion of mine to work with people that, you know, were going through that those adverse life experiences. And, you know, now I think being one of them myself and being on the other side of that now, it has morphed into like, okay, so once you're, you know, surviving and maybe even thriving in your life, then, then what, right? Like what comes next? Let, let's go find out. <laughs> I love it. How, Leslie, how can people find you? Where, where are you hanging out? Where sure. can people find you? Um, so I, I am on social, so you can find me on Facebook, actually, um, with my maiden name kind of in there between. So the Facebook um, profile is Leslie, it's L-E-S-L-E-Y, and then my maiden name, which is Photiatis, um, it's P-H-O-T-I-A-D-I-S, and then Martine, M-A-R-T-I-N. So that's where I am on, on Facebook. And then on Instagram, it's Leslie Martine Coaching. And you can find me there. And then I on my website also, which is the same, lesliemartinecoaching.com. Um, and I am I am on LinkedIn if there's any real professional people out there just under Leslie Martine. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. We'll pop the links below the show notes oh, as well for, for, for our listeners. And I know you very generously had a free gift for everybody. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about that? And we'll pop sure. the links below as well. Um, yeah, so this is my newest um, gift that I've come up with, and I'm very excited about it. It is on boundaries. And the reason that I think that that's important is because when we are trying to, again, change our self-concept, maybe grow into a new identity, one of the things that I think can get in the way and be a bit of an obstacle is if we you know, don't have very clear, healthy boundaries in our lives. And those that may be with other people, that may be with ourselves, Again, this is coming from many, many years of doing a lot of trauma work with folks where, you know, being able to establish healthy boundaries was not always something that was a given or, or possible. And so even though we may be on the other side of that now, that's not an automatic skill set that gets developed. Um, and so I have melded the, the quiz together. So it, it's five minutes, um, very quick to just tell you a little bit about your preferred boundary style, what kinds of boundaries you, you tend to hold and what that might, how that may be related to your attachment and why that would be important. Again, because when we're trying to, to grow and, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, if the ground underneath you feels like it's shifting a little bit, oftentimes any of those attachment wounds or if it's not even a wound, that's a little bit strong, just, you know, little niggles there um, mm -hmm. can get activated. And so it might be helpful to, to know. So I put together this quiz just to give um, people, you know, something useful to, to reflect on and certainly something that I see quite a bit with my clients many, many times um, we're working on, okay, where, what do those boundaries look like? That's going to be so helpful. I encourage everybody to, to take that quiz because boundaries is it's something that I see time and time again with entrepreneurs as they're growing their businesses. 
where they can be that like a business plateau will suddenly come up and actually it's the work that they need to do is around boundary setting to enable them to grow their businesses to that to that next level and often people won't think that that's the thing they'll think it's something completely different right or just I know again as Mm. perfectionist high achiever the place I go is I need to do more I just have to work more and you know, what I probably need to do is take a few days off, like, right, <laughs> to just allow the, the creativity to, to come. And yeah, but having when you are an entrepreneur, and you're in charge of your schedule, if you don't put those boundaries in around self care, or, you know, time with the family or socially or for exercise or sleep or whatever it is that if you don't block that out, like you could all of us have enough work that we could you know, easily be working many, many hours a day more than what is probably healthy for us overall. Right, quite. Oh, well, that is a huge gift. Thank you so much for, for that. And thank you. Oh, you're you're so you welcome. For, <laughs> for so long. We'll ha- you'll have to come back on the on the podcast again. We'll have you back. I would love that. Yes. Oh, thank you for your time and sharing your wisdom with everybody to, today, Leslie. And I do encourage everybody to who's been listening to go and check Leslie out, get into her world and to get that free gift and find out what tweaks might be supportive for you in terms of boundaries for your next part of your journey. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Louise, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Such an honor. And thank you everyone for listening into this episode. We'd love to hear your thoughts and insights. You can come and join us in the Money Money Kinesiology for Six and Seven Figure CEOs that we have on Facebook and come and share your thoughts on our podcast episode there. We'll um, love to see you in there. Until our next episode, sending you all loads and loads of love. Speak to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.